welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. Andrea Earhart here, muralist, adventurer, and your host as I interview inspiring artists who are killing it in the art game to show you that it's completely possible to make a great living doing the thing you love to do. (laughs) We highlight the business side of art to help you reach more customers, increase profits, and ultimately live a life of creative freedom. (laughs) Enjoy the show. This episode is sponsored by the Mural Master Program inside of the Artist Academy Advanced Membership. This program is specifically designed to help you with every step of the mural process. From coming up with an idea, to finding a wall to paint it on, to pitching your ideas to businesses, and finally, of course, I teach you exactly how to paint large scale. Murals are a lot of fun and a great way to grow your art business. I know because it has been one of the top ways that I've been able to grow my own art business as quickly as I have. With several years of experience as a muralist, I've dialed down the painting techniques, the proposals, the pitching, the whole bit. And now I've compiled it into one resource for you called the Mural Master Program. This is included inside of the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, and I would love to invite you to join us by going to artistacademy.co, that is artistacademy.co, and click the link to see the Mural Master Program and learn more. And that's it. So let's get on with the show. Should you offer art lessons? (laughs) I'm going to bet that every single one of you have at least thought about this topic at least once in your art career so far. And if you haven't, I'm going to bet that you will at some point. Should you start teaching? As an art educator myself and someone who has gone to school even to be a teacher, I was going to be an art teacher. (laughs) That was my plan. It was mostly because I thought that that was the only way to be an artist was to be an art teacher. I wanted to offer my personal opinion on the subject, hopefully to not be as biased as I can be, and just to give you a little clarity on what it's like being an art teacher or an art instructor. I mean, I'm not like a classical art teacher in the classic sense that you would go into your classroom. (laughs) My art teacher, shout out to Miss Lind, she was the sweetest thing. (laughs) And one of the reasons I liked art so much, she was so nice and just so easygoing and it was just a great experience. So shout out to Miss Lind, my art teacher. But I want to give you a little clarity on what it's like on this end of the microphone at teaching and on this end of the camera doing art lessons and all of that stuff to help you make a decision if you have not already. So this is for the person who is thinking about offering art lessons but maybe has not yet. So just think about the reasons why you're thinking about it. I think that it's just a natural progression for artists to paint for a while and then eventually in their older ages start to teach. And because usually the older artist, whoever has the most experience, is the best teacher. And same with, I think, nurses and just a lot of different trades. The more experience you have, the more you have to share and the more you want to share because you kind of start to get bored with what you're doing. And I think part of that is one of the reasons people switch to teaching. It's because they get a little bored with what they're doing. And it's hard to imagine getting bored of painting (laughs) every day, but I think that's one reason. So maybe ask yourself, are you just getting bored? Are you ready for a pivot? I was reading something, oh my gosh, I'm so bad at referencing things, but I was reading something to where every four to five years, your career does like a trajectory straight line up. And then it levels out. So imagine like you're looking at lines that look like stairs. You're going up and then you're leveling out and then you're going up and then you're leveling out and up up and leveling out. That's basically what a normal person's career is. And they, they explain it in a way to where as soon as, you know, you, you work, work, work to get to a level and then you, 
you're really happy with it and you stay there for a while and then things are going really well and you just you're like okay what's next and then the line climbs up because you try something new you add in um, you know, you might be a canvas painter and you decide you want to do murals. You're like, okay, I need something new and exciting. I'm going to do that. And so it goes up and then you level out because you get, eventually get the mural process down after a while. And then, oh, well, I want to, I want to backtrack a little bit. I want to offer prints. And so you, you know, it just, it gets a little bit harder. And so the line goes up and then it, you get the print system down and then it levels out and that's your next thing. And that's basically what happened to my art career. <laughs> I was like, okay, I do canvas stuff and now I want to do murals. And then I was like, whoa, well, I'll do canvas stuff again and I'm going to do prints. <laughs> and then I'm at this plateau for a while and I was like, well, what if I started to teach? What does that look like? And it's just my never-ending goal list just keeps on going. Another reason that you might be thinking about teaching is money. <laughs> that's why we all work. <laughs> just letting you know that's money. It's okay to want money. It's okay to do all the things for it that you want to do. <laughs> Basically painting, murals, prints, commissions, or all the things. Teaching. And so you're like, well, maybe I can make some money teaching because my art career is not bringing in the amount that I want. Or if you were like me, you're like, well, I'm at a good place. Maybe I could make a side income from teaching and just let you in on a little secret just to be really open and honest. I mostly got into it because I got a little bored and I thought it could be a new money avenue, just to be completely honest. And then once I got in it, I realized how freaking hard it was <laughs> to really get this teaching thing down because it's like an online, it's totally different with video than it, than I was trained in college for in person. And it was just a very different experience. And in order to get people to trust you to be an educator, that's a whole nother thing as well. Online presence and just, it was really hard. And I'm going to tell you that if my only reasons were I was bored and I wanted money, I would have given up in the first, I mean, I'd say I would have lasted six months, the very longest time. <laughs> and that's completely just honest about it. But I remember getting that first message from someone. I remember we were in our first 30-day challenge, and now every every year we do a 30-day challenge. Jan January 1st, you complete a painting every day for 30 days. And I was in the first 30-day challenge that I'd ever done, and I think we had 30 people in it total. And one person messaged me, and she was like, I don't remember if she actually finished it or not, but she got close. And she just messaged me, and she's like, you have changed the trajectory of my year. I have painted more right now than I have ever have in my whole life, and I believe I can do it now. Thank you so much. And I melted. <laughs> I shed a little tear, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I'm meant to do. <laughs> and the rest of the year was just blackout because I got so laser focused on this is exactly what I am meant to do, and I still believe that. I am still a year and a half later lit up by, oh, actually, whoa, it's almost been two years. Holy gosh, that's insane. <laughs> and I still get lit up doing all of the things. Anytime a student messages me and says, hey, I've got a sale because of a training that I watched, or you, you gave me the confidence because you told me to go pitch myself to this person, and I, I really don't know if I would have done it, I melt every time. <laughs> and that is why I am a teacher. Which brings me to another point is if you're wanting to get into it because you think you would really enjoy helping people, I'd say that is the number one thing for you to do. <laughs> it's There's no comparison in getting a testimonial or someone telling you that you have helped them in some way and there's just no feel-good thing that compares in my book. And it's funny because whenever I first started out with this, I did not consider myself a nurturing type at all. I am not the nurse type. I knew that I could not care for people when they were sick. That's just not my thing. And <laughs> call it a little cold-hearted if you want, but I 
I just did not see myself as the nurturing type. I just, I was, I had this mentality of, well, I've had to work hard and I was, I didn't have any handouts, so you can do it too. And that's, that's really what it was for the first while. And it happened to be, I got into teaching through thinking it was a good business plan and it is. And the thinking it was a good business plan is the thing that got me into it. (laughs) So if you're like, well, I don't think I'm passionate about teaching people. I also don't want to hold you back because you just never know. You could be like me and you could be a closet (laughs) softy and figure out that helping people is the thing that brings you the most joy. Yeah, you never know. So you got to just, just try it out. But I would say if you think you would be a good teacher, then that is, that is your, I'm giving you permission to do it because a lot of people too will hold themselves back and be like, well, I don't know everything there is about teaching, so I can't teach. And I'm, I'm raising my hand when I, because I thought that too. Even teaching clouds here recently, I was like, well, I'm not the best cloud painter that I know. Why should I do it? And my clouds aren't, you know, like they're good, but they're not photorealistic. Like, who am I to teach? Like there's someone who could do it better. (laughs) And I know that there's a student listening to this who watched the cloud tutorial and was like, no, I I learned from your tutorial tutorial. Don't say that. And I know that there is someone out there to where they want you to stop saying that inside of your head as well. I always get on my like soapbox and get all preachy on this (laughs) and it feels kind of funny to do it, but it's just what comes naturally, I guess. I want to like inspire you and (laughs) encourage you and I hope it's not coming off cheesy (laughs) because that's how I feel in my head, but I want to just talk to the person who is thinking that they want to teach but they don't have enough skill level yet. And I want to say, if you if you are doing all right in your art business and people are buying things and your stuff looks good and you constantly, you know, you get sales and, you know, things are going well for you, I would say then you pass the art, your art does not suck test <laughs> and you can teach it. And I would say even if you have a certain niche, like you're really good at painting butterflies per se, start there and just start painting butterflies and show people how to do that. Start there. And if people ask for more, expand on that, but start with what you know really well. Don't try to paint clouds if you have to learn how to paint clouds yourself. (laughs) So we talk about the money aspect in this. So how much can you charge being an art educator? And I would say I looked up a bunch of information on this just to double check myself because I know that in the Midwest it's different and just all over the place it's different, okay? So don't take these numbers as hard set in numbers. But from my research, I have found that you can charge between $20 and $30 an hour for beginner stuff. So I would say high school students, you could charge them you could charge 20 to 30 dollars an hour to help high school students and below with their art and there's some high school students that need you know advanced work and for that for an advanced instructor i have seen stuff to where you can you can charge 80 plus dollars so somewhere between 30 to 80 plus dollars and how i personally would price that is whatever you are charging in your business per hour, that's also what you can charge to teach. Okay? And that's what I do as well. However, I do not take one-on-one clients because not everybody wants to pay $85 an hour (laughs) to have instruction by me, which is why I thought it would be a lot better to do group instruction, which is what I do at the Artist Academy. And while we're talking about the Artist Academy, I wanted to shed a little light on if you're thinking about starting a membership group. So (laughs) if you're thinking about just, you know, art instructing one-on-one and doing like tutoring for kids, that's another thing. Um, And doing an art membership group is a totally different thing. When I got into this, I had no idea how hard it was going to be and how much time it would take up. I laugh at myself thinking that it was going to be just a passive income thing that I throw up and everybody 
signs up for and I just throw up maybe a couple videos a month and that's it. It's not it at all. <laughs> it's so much more work than you think, but it's so worth it. But if you're thinking about starting a membership group, I would say to really be honest with how big your audience is. So if you're really thinking about, like you've seen me do it, you see that I have 100 members now, and you see all these other successful membership groups, and they have hundreds of thousands, and you're doing the math in your head, and you're like, well, $20 or $30 a month times 100 members? Holy gosh, I, I could do that. I Yeah, that could solve a lot of my problems. I would, if you don't have an audience, it's going to be a lot harder. And I don't want to discourage you completely, but this is something that I recently heard, or basically recently, and it's in the, the last year. I did not hear this advice before I started, and I'm really glad I didn't, so I'm hesitant to tell you, but it's, I just think a lot of people need to hear it because it'll keep you from being disappointed. And whenever you start your membership group, it's amazing and you'll love it and all of that, but you're going to start with not many people. Not very many people are going to sign up for it. I know that because I was like, yeah, I'll sign up for it. I'll do this and I'll have 50 members. And then like 25 signed up and I was like, oh, why? I Why? I have the background. I have great product. Um, I have a teaching degree. I have, why are people not signing up? I, I, I love this. Why? And uh, I'm not sure, but a lot of people... Just like playing the long game, like we just talked about on a different podcast episode, a lot of people need proof first. And that's what's happening with the Artist Academy. That's why I think a lot of people are diving in right now. It's because for the first year, I was figuring out my teaching style and I was figuring out what to do and how to do it and all of that. And now that I've got my groove down and I'm, you know, a lot of students are seeing results and I'm posting those results. Now, a bunch of people are like, oh, those, okay, you could do that for that person, I'm in. <laughs> That's basically how a lot are thinking. And, you know, sometimes it's just wrong place, wrong time. People aren't in the right mindset at certain times of years and or at a certain place in their life or, you know, and they're just waiting for a good time to join your membership group. So I would say if you want to start a membership group, know it's going to be hard. <laughs> know it's going to take up a lot of your time, at first at least. I mean, it did for me at first. Now it's not as much. I do one, one day a week. I sit down and I just I do a bunch of content. I do podcasting. I do a bunch of content for my Artist Academy group. And then the rest of the week, I'm just kind of maintaining, you know, um, replying to DMs and emails and doing all of that. But I'm really just creating one day a week now. And, but at first it was a lot more than that and just getting everything down and doing all the things. And so just know that that's another thing that is a long game. If you want to see a hundred members, it took me a year and a half to get a hundred members and I have 60,000 Instagram followers. So not to discourage you, but I just don't want you to sign up and do the membership thing and expect to have 50 members right out the gate like I did unless you have a big audience if you have a big audience if you which means if you have a lot on YouTube a lot on Facebook and a lot on Instagram I think then you'll be in a better place but <laughs> just expect it to not be so much also with teaching this is another thing in here I just want you to think about and not to discourage again but it's going to be another facet of your business that is going to take up a lot of time and it's going to take away from your painting. And a lot of the times I tell people, if you're in the beginning of your art career and you don't, you just want to, you just need to make a little money. Okay, sure. Do some one-on-one -on -one training and whatnot, but that's about it. Don't dive into a lot of different things like a membership group or all of that until you've got your art business down. You need to have your art business down before you go and teach painting 
you know, in that other way. If that's what you want. If you're wanting to grow your art business and you're thinking, well, teaching could be just something you could do, you know, maybe just here and there. Like I, I would say my biggest advice would be to focus on your art business because thankfully I did that and, and my art business was kind of on autopilot where I was, I didn't have to focus a ton on getting new business and I didn't have to figure a ton out. I mean, I'm always still learning on the mural side and, and everything, but most of it was on autopilot. So I could focus on then teaching and getting that groove in and growing the, the membership group. Don't try to do them both at the same time because you'll stress yourself out and you also don't have as much credibility. If you're trying to teach and you don't have your stuff figured out, a lot of people will see that and be like, well, why would I go to you kind of a thing? Oh, that sounds so harsh, but it's so true. So focus on you. You do you, boo. (laughs) So one way you could do it would be to teach on Patreon. You could throw a couple art tutorials up on Patreon. And if you would like to know how to do that, our recent interview with Eva Lacey, she is big on the Patreon and she says the same thing. It's the long game. You're going to have to figure it out in the long game. (laughs) Do not expect there to be a lot of people right off the hand. And we have a extra special training inside the Arts Academy Advanced from Eva Lacey. I have licensed her Patreon training. It's over an hour long of everything you need for to set up on Patreon. It's over an hour long of everything you need to set up on Patreon and it's amazing. And so if you're thinking about using Patreon and you're like, I haven't talked you out of teaching (laughs) and you're thinking about getting on Patreon, I highly suggest Eva Lacey's tutorial and it's inside the Arts Academy Advanced. How convenient. If you are an Arts Academy member and you're like, hey, I want to check that out. It's under the contributing artists section. You're welcome. Have fun. Let me know how you like it. Okay, so to get into a couple tips that I learned in college that I think would be really good to pass on, a couple just a couple things that really stood out to me when I was going to Missouri State and studying art education. I literally went through the whole program and I except for student teaching. <laughs> I I figured it out in the end. I took all the classes and everything. I was I was double majoring in painting and and art education. With a minor in business, I know it's a lot, but, and I figured out on the last, in the last semester, I finished everything and I, it was time to do student teaching and I was like, I want to be an artist. I don't want to just be an art teacher. (laughs) I want to be an artist too. And so luckily I did not do the rest of that, just graduated with a painting degree and started painting. And now I'm back to it. (laughs) So it's funny how everything comes in full circle. I've always wanted to teach and now it's coming back to it, but Anyway, a couple tips that I've learned in college, and there are many, many of them, just studying art education and how to teach someone and how their brain works is such a fascinating thing. But a couple things that my professor told me, and one thing is to always tell your students that their question is a good question because everybody's scared to ask questions. Everybody's scared to ask too many questions. And so I try a lot of the times, and I'm just giving my secrets away here, but it's okay. And it's, I think it's for the overall good. But anytime anybody asks a question, and I try to do this more, I should do this more, but I, anytime anybody asks a question and I can kind of feel like they feel a little uneasy about it, I'll say, that's a great question. And most of the time it is a great question, <laughs> but if I, if I can tell at all that they're uneasy about it, I'll be like, that's a great question. And then I'll answer it. And just that little bit makes them just, it gives them so much more confidence to ask more questions, which is what you want as an art educator. You don't want someone assuming things. You don't want someone, you know, taking your advice and running the wrong direction with it. Like they want clarity and you want them to feel comfortable clarifying. So whenever somebody asks you a question as an art educator, always say, that's a great question, and then answer it. Another tip is ask your students for the answer. When they ask you a question, say, if you don't want to do the, that's a great question and answer it, use your judgment, but this is what I do. I'm like, what do you think we should do? And I literally ask them if we're we're working together and I do this a lot with Samantha too um I know the answer I know the answer to it but I want her to figure it out or whoever I'm working with and I'll I'll be like what what should we do here 
and <laughs> I make her use her brain and or whoever I'm working with, even though I know exactly what we should do. And if, you know, sometimes they give a different answer than I want and we kind of come to a compromise or sometimes it's a different answer than I think it should be. And I'm like, oh, that's even better. But a lot of the times they don't know and I'll ask them and I'll steer them in the direction that I want. But asking a question is a better way to educate someone rather than just preaching at them all the time. So in this podcast, I'm preaching at you and I'm telling you all these things, but if you're in person with someone, a really good art education tip is to ask them a question and really act like you don't know the answer to it. (laughs) Be like, what should we charge for this? Or "Um, do you think we, we should put a varnish on top of this? And see what they say. <laughs> if they say it wrong, they're like, eh, maybe we should. <laughs> if they say no, you know, and steer them in the right direction. But that's another art education tip that I got and that I'm passing along to you. It's all about your students. It's all about the students when you are educating. And yeah, okay. Another thing is if you decide you want to do this, you really have to promote, promote, promote. You can't, if you just throw it up once and say, hey, I'm offering art, you can say, I have some tutorials available, everybody go buy them. And usually you'll have maybe one to two in the beginning, but the more you post about it, the better it's going to be. And you have to continue to post, post, promote, promote, promote. So this is a different, this is another thing that you're going to have to promote other than your art. And one thing that I didn't foresee happening is it took a lot of time away from painting and a lot of time away from me promoting my art. I'm almost, I'm talking to two different people on my Instagram. I'm talking to, pe- to artists who want to learn and I'm talking to customers who want to buy from me. And I have to just put on my thinking cap of, okay, who am I promoting to today? And, or who, who do I want to attract with this? Okay, I want to offer prints, so obviously I'm not going to give an art business tip if I'm, like, wanting someone to buy my print. It's a completely different mindset. You're, you're talking to two different people. And so if you don't have your art buyer down, if you don't know who your ideal customer avatar is <laughs> with that, then yet, then maybe don't go creating another one with the, um art education one. And speaking of ideal customer avatar, the very first tutorial I did inside the Artist Academy Advanced was to figure out who your ideal customer avatar is. And I literally just redid it today and put it back in there and just with a whole new spin on it. So when it comes to educating, you're always making it better. You're always figuring out how you can portray your message faster and just overall better. And that's what I'm doing inside the Artist Academy. I just re-recorded our first ever live tutorial that we did inside the Artist Academy and I put it up and I need to send an email out to people to letting them know that I put it in there. Actually, this is a good reminder to myself to do that. So yeah, okay. I hope I didn't talk you out of it. If anything, if you're thinking about it, try it. Just try it out. You'll know if you'll love it or not. You, you'll know. And there's no harm in trying. But I just wanted to shed a little, little bit of light on my perspective of being an art educator. It really is the best job in the world. It's the most fulfilling job in the world. Okay, that's it. I'm out. Thank you. I will see you next week. This episode is sponsored by the Mural Master Program inside of the Artist Academy Advanced Membership. This program is specifically designed to help you with every step of the mural process. From coming up with an idea, to finding a wall to paint it on, to pitching your ideas to businesses, and finally, of course, I teach you exactly how to paint large scale. Murals are a lot of fun and a great way to grow your art business. I know because it has been one of the top ways that I've been able to grow my own art business as quickly as I have. With several years of experience as a muralist, I've dialed down the painting techniques, the proposals, the pitching, the whole bit. And now I've compiled it into one resource for you called the Mural Master Program. This is included inside of the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, and I would love to invite you to join us by going to artistacademy.co, that is artistacademy.co, and click the link to see the Mural Master Program and learn more. If 
you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. If you review our podcast and send a screenshot of that review to me on Instagram, I am art by Andrea Earhart. I will gladly share your art on my Instagram story with a reach of over 60 thousand as a thank you for helping us grow this artist academy community and speaking of community if you would like to be a part of our absolutely free and very encouraging community on social media just head over to facebook.com slash groups slash artist academy and i will see you next week <laughs>